Hey everybody and welcome to another HD tutorial and in this video I'll be walking you through the entire um, basically Rocket Dock interface. Now I've already done a video about how to acquire the Rocket Dock software. You can probably uh, just click on my name or I'll try to put that in the description somehow. But um, forgive me if it's not there. So basically what we're going to do here is go over Rocket Dock. If you want to see what's in my dock you can look here now. We have our internet browsers and our internet related things. We have um, oh yeah, and Downloader and CCleaner. Then we have our Microsoft Office documents and as well as Photoshop. Then we have uh, our communications section which includes email, Skype, UCAM which is the webcam software, and Google Earth, and Bluetooth. Now we have a few tools which I have Cam Studio, the Camtasia software, the uh, Windows 7 calculator, Notepad, um, little OCR which is basically my scanner, uh, converting that to text, etc. Um, the Sage Dictionary. Um, here's my media section. You can see I have separators in between the sections. We have Windows Media Center, iTunes, Windows Media Player, and the Rhapsody for my phone. And then we have the stuff that came with it by standard, and I also added a downloads section. So they have my computer, network, documents, music, pictures. This is the standard stuff. And I put uTorrent all the way on the right hand side with the recycling bin and dock settings. Now, dock settings is the most important thing basically in the whole software section of um, the Rocket Dock. So what we're going to go over here, let's start with the general tab, is this is all the, in the languages that you can choose to have um, your dock and your language in. I'm not going to change anything with that because I speak English. So you can have it run at startup. I have lift that check which means the dock will automatically come up at your startup. Uh, store settings in a portable INI, that's just basically if you want someone else to log into your computer, then their Rocket Dock would just be the standard one, but yours, when you logged on, would have all your icons. Minimize Windows to the Dock. Now if I tick that and I hit OK, I just have to show you what that looks like. If I have a notepad document up here and I minimize it, you'll see it swipes in and there is my notepad document. I click it and it kind of drags out. And again, minimize. It has a little animation that you can disable if it gets a 9. But, um, that's basically what minimize windows to dock means and if you do have windows vista then you will get the live previews so you have a youtube uh, a youtube thing running then that will work however i have disabled that so they minimize the tray because i actually like the way they work here in windows vista so next we have a running application instance or indicator so i have a firefox preloader right now so right now there's a little black arrow above it you can see and that is what the uh... open application inst instance or indicator actually means. So I have Skype on right now. I should put that as do not disturb. I have Skype running right now. I have my email client as well as the screen recorder, etc. So that is what that means. Um, open running application instance means that if I already have a notepad document open and I go up here and hit the notepad button, it'll bring up the one that is already open. So that's pretty cool. And lock items is basically so I can't accidentally drag one out and delete it. Um, you can easily just right click on the dock and hit unlock items and then that will simply um, unlock all the items and you can drag them around, change the order, change the icon itself, etc. Let's go to icons. Right now I have it on high quality because of my computer's, I mean the computer I'm running this on is a pretty intense uh, gaming machine, it's a laptop but it's very good. So I left it on high quality just to get the best quality out of my, uh, my icons. I left them on 100% opacity. Now, what this means, if you see the dock above here, this means that whenever I am looking at them, they have full opacity. They're completely opaque over my desktop. But if I were to lower the opacity, you see they get a little transparent. But I've checked the box that says zoom opaque. So when I actually mouse over it, the one that I'm mousing over is no longer transparent. It's actually opaque again. So that's pretty cool that I can do that. Um, but I leave them all pretty much on full opacity so I can see them whenever I want. The size is basically the size of the icons. Very, very self-intuitive there. Um, now, there's two hover effects. There's a bubble, which you see when I go over these. There is a plateau, which kind of just spreads them out more and doesn't go up and down vertically as much. And then there is zoom flat, which just completely goes sideways and you can move the entire rocket dock like this. I think this is the coolest way, but I really don't need it to expand that much so I don't use that. Um, so I leave it at zoom bubble. You can also have no zoom which is also that actually works in Mac OS 10 you just have the names pop up if you're tired of those animations. So I've left it on zoom bubble. 
Next we have the actual amount that it does zoom and the zoom width. That's pretty much self-explanatory. If you want it to zoom to be humongous, say I go from 15 to 128, look, it just gets ginormous. And you can see the higher quality of the icons when I actually do that. Like, that's a not very good icon. That's very pixelated, but that's a really high quality icon right there. So that's pretty good. Um, I leave this down closer to about 20 or, no, I leave it to closer to about 15 pixels, which is what I had before. So now let's go to position. This is where it gets kind of interesting. A lot of people like to put their rocket dock down. Oh, you can also choose what monitor it's on. I have unplugged the other monitor, so my laptop's only got one monitor hooked up. Um, you can choose the screen position to be on the bottom, okay? So it'll be all the way on the bottom of your screen, almost exactly like Mac OS X. Obviously, you'll want to have some edge offset so it's not on top of your toolbar. But a lot of people that I know actually unlock this taskbar and drag it to the top. So they have their taskbar on top, and they have their rocket dock on the bottom, okay? And that's giving it a whole lot more of a Mac OS X theme, especially with the theme that I've installed on this rocket dock. So that's pretty cool, but I'm just going to reverse that because I live, I pretty much leave it on the, on the top. You can also put it on the left or the right if you so desire. So I'm going to leave mine on the top. Edge offset is basically how far from the edge it is. You can have it halfway down your screen, or you could have it right flush with the edge. So I leave mine flush. And also centering, I leave mine dead in the center. You can make it further to the left if you have the sidebar maybe, or further to the right. Now let's go to um, style. Style, I did a previous video on it, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. But basically you can install and uh, download and get more by hitting this button. A whole bunch of themes. And also change the fonts and the opacity of the fonts when you mouse over one of those icons. So that's pretty cool. Next is the behavior button. This is pretty much the last... Um, the last important one, if you actually click on an icon, like in Mac OS X, it'll bounce for a second. So look, if I click on Cam Studio, actually no, I can't do it now. So if I hit OK, and I click on Cam Studio, it'll bounce for a second, and you can see that that's the kind of attention that it gets when it when you uh, when you actually click on it. So if I click on my computer, it bounces once or twice, then it opens it up. So that's pretty cool. Um, if I go back into Settings, I can actually disable that, because again, that just takes a tiny bit more CPU, and I'd rather not. The Uber icon effects, I have not found that to work very well, but if I do try it, let's see. If I do try it, no, it doesn't work. It just, it kind of makes it a little, a little uh, explosion effect when you click on the icon. It's not that great, but, so I just leave it at none. And also you can set it to auto hide. Now here's a cool thing a lot of people do. If I hit OK, the dock's just gone, right? But whenever I mouse over close to the top of the screen, it comes back. And I can choose whatever I want from here. Then when I leave it, it hides back again. So that's a pretty cool feature if you really like a really clean desktop. You may have noticed I have absolutely no icons on my whole desktop. So that is, uh, that's why I use a rocket dock in the first place. So you can also choose uh, how long it takes to pop up. Um, you can choose the delay, how long it takes to pop up, etc. So I left unchecked auto hide. And that is basically it. You can reset the, all the defaults at any time by just pressing that default button. And also you can see this is version 1.3.5. Copyright punk software. So you can update it just by hitting that one simple button. If you have any problems with it, you can hit the forums button. And that is basically it. So um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, a little walkthrough of the menus. And also uh, there's this little thing where you can right click. I didn't show you yet. You can hit the unlock items button so I can remove an icon and then it will just disappear or I would um, drag it back in wherever I want to put it. So that's a pretty interesting feature I like to show you guys um, in Mac on the, uh, the rocket dock. And hopefully I can get back to you guys with more tutorials. If you have any requests for any tutorial at all, I will handle it as best as I can. All you got to do is subscribe and send me a personal message and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.